Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week like every week we have an incredibly diverse selection for you guys and girls from a solid 18 karat white gold modern GMT from Rolex all the way to, down to a beautiful 1969 Amiga Constellation with its box and paperwork something very very rare and everything in between as you can possibly imagine including a Fears Alliance Christopher Ward jumping hour uh, and a Fluron 18 karat pink gold uh, with fancy lugs or bomb lugs as they're called, something really, really incredible and something for everyone in this drop. And that's what we strive to achieve here at Kibble Watches and that's thanks to you guys and girls that we can do this. Um, as a lot of you know, we buy a lot of watches but also we can sign a lot of watches which is where we sell them on your behalf and it's thanks to the trust of our consigners and the trust of our buyers that we've been able to sort of grow to this, this stage where we can offer a drop as varied as this. Um, and I think it's what you guys and girls really come, have come to appreciate as well about what we do. I had this vision very early on uh, when I was probably 17, 18 of building a business where I could offer a diverse selection um, because I thought it's what the market you know, was lacking at the time. Obviously, there's a lot of watch dealers now who offer a wide range of watches. And of course, there was back then as well. It's not like I was the first to do such a thing, but I wanted to do it nice and, and well here in England, um, and I didn't think anyone was. So I'm very grateful, and I'm very, very lucky to be able to do what I enjoy every single day, and that's thanks to you guys and girls. But um, that's enough of the rambling. So I want to also apologize if I look and sound exhausted. It's because I am. Uh, we recently moved house, as I said in the last video. And for those of you that have ever moved house, you know it's a stressful situation and no matter how well you prepare and how well you plan, there's always a mad rush, especially with sorting out the previous property you're in and just getting everything done. So um, I am exhausted and uh, that is the reason why. Um, so before we jump onto the watches on table, what is on wrist? And this is a watch I am so excited to get in. This is a beautiful 18 karat pink gold Movado Gentleman from the 1950s, uh, bumper automatic. Super thin, super elegant, and as I said, 18 karat pink gold, or rose gold, depending on what you want to call it. Really beautiful example. Um, I've always wanted one of these. They feature a solid 18 karat gold dial that you can see is just fantastic. It's a lot of gold, it's quite bright, but it's toned out beautifully, in my opinion, with the brown suede I've put it on. Um, I'm just a big fan of this model. I've seen it many, many times, but I've never had one personally. It is something I've, I've bought as stock, so it will be going for sale eventually, I just may delay that process a while and enjoy it myself um, for a little while. The joys of buying watches, right? I get to enjoy them. Uh, but that's what's on wrist. Uh, email me if you're interested, but as I say, I might be a bit hesitant to let it go just at the moment, uh, and it is a wonderful example. So yes, now let's go on to what you're here to see, and that is the watches on the table. We're gonna have to start, no surprise, with the 18 karat gold Rolex GMT Master. Let's take a closer look at this one. So to begin this week's episode, we have this absolutely beautiful 18 karat white gold Rolex GMT Master 2, the reference is 126. 719 BLRO. As you can see, it features the blue dial, which I think suits the watch absolutely perfectly. And the most, the, the thing you notice straight away with this watch in person is just the weight. Obviously, all being 18 karat gold, it has a real heft to it that stainless steel just doesn't have. And obviously, being white gold as well, um, it has that stealth factor. Now, on wrist, um, from afar, you would think it was a stainless steel watch. However, if you have a stainless steel watch next to this watch, you can sort of see the slight color difference. White gold has a slightly more warmer hue, a bit more of a luster to it, um, which is why it's sort of favored by a lot of people. And it's why they use it for the fluted bezel on the date just as well, because it just has that extra luster and extra shine uh, that stainless steel just doesn't have. Now this one is completely unpolished. Uh, it has been worn. There are marks here and there as you'd expect from a worn watch, but it does also feature some stickers still. So actual clasp itself across the center and over here still has a sticker still has a sticker here and here um, there's stickers in certain places on this watch um, at the end of the day we like to leave watches unpolished because you can never unpolish a watch however we can always have a watch polish so if you'd like this looking brand new again we can get that done for you that's no problem at all this one's from june 2019 with its box and paperwork and inside is the automatic rolex caliber 3285 it comes with all of its links and it's um nice modern rolex clasp as you'd expect with the pop out for a five mil adjustment which you can fold away you can still see actually some stickers on the underside of there as well um 
not really an awful lot more to say about this watch other than for me, I would say if I had the kind of money that this is, I would personally be be enjoying something like this. I really love white gold and platinum. And I think, you know, for me, yellow gold or rose gold is perfectly fine with vintage. However, modern watches, I find white gold or platinum far more attractive to me personally. Um, so yeah, here it is. But let's show it on wrist and tall dimensions. Here we go, paired on my seven inch wrist. As I say, a real weight difference. You can tell as soon as it goes on wrist. Uh, what you're looking at here dimension wise is 40 mil by 47.5 mil lug to lug, 11.5 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. So you could swap this out. I have actually seen a photo of someone wearing this on a leather strap, uh, which I think looked absolutely awesome. But at the end of the day, I kind of like it best on the bracelet. So go check out this one on the website today and pick yourself up one of the best priced out there on the market at the moment. From there over to probably one of my favorite modern Rolexes in a while, part of the date just range a lot of you know I prefer vintage um, for the most part whereas this one has really caught my attention it's a motif dial blue motif dial date just fluted bezel jubilee bracer really really wonderful example in 36 mil the nice size for a date just in my opinion let's take a closer look next up a 36 mil Rolex oyster perpetual date just with a blue motif dial as you can see it has that beautiful pattern and texture which I think complements that fluted bezel and the jubilee bracelet perfectly because you have multiple finishes across the entirety of the watch, brushed, polished, fluted, and then the texture on the dial, which I think really complements and brings it all together. And it's why I said in the intro to this watch, it is personally one of my favorites uh, that I've seen in a little while. I think it's absolutely super attractive. Um, I'd love to know down in the comments what you think of this watch. Um, so the reference to this one is 126234-0049. Now, as you look around the case, you'll see there are still stickers on the majority of the lugs and a couple of stickers here and there as well. The watches, uh, like new, you probably will see a couple of hairline scratches here and there from light wear, but to be honest, it looks like it's been sat in the safe most of its life. So that's a sticker on the case back as well. Just overall in very, very good condition. So you can rest assured you're picking yourself up. Not only a great deal, but a watch that's uh, ready to be enjoyed and for you to put your marks into it. Inside is the automatic Rolex Caliber 3235, and this one's from May 2022 with its box and paperwork and complete bracelet, as you'd expect from a watch of this age. Um, not an awful lot more to say. You know, I think for me personally, the modern Rolexes, I actually prefer them on an Oyster bracelet with the fluted bezel, because I often find the Jubilee and the fluted on modern Rolex day just a bit too bright. However, with this dial, I feel like it all pairs in nicely. Uh, and I actually think this config configuration is one of the nicest. And as I said before, 36 mil for me for the date just is where it should be. I just think it's comfortable and the best looking. Um, but again, that's my opinion. So let's show this one on wrist and tall dimensions. Here we go paired on my seven inch wrist, a very, very good looking watch. And again, proportion wise for me, 36 mil is ideal. So 36 mil by 43 mil lug to lug, 11 mil thick and 20 mil on the lug. So you could swap it out if you wanted to but I think the Jubilee suits it perfectly. So go check out this one on the website today. From there, let's switch gears completely to a really, really cool special edition or limited edition uh, Tag Heuer Carrera red dial with the Caliber 02 in the new and improved 30 mil size. It is impressive. I'm really, really a big fan of this and I think Tag Heuer are gonna go even further with this new range, which they already are doing. So let's take a close look at this So one. next up, the Tag Heuer Carrera limited edition of 600 vibrant red dial with the O2 movement, the Heuer O2. Uh, as we flip it over, we might as well show it now, as you can see, proudly displayed right there with a very, very cool looking red rotor, uh, black rotor, sorry. Really, really nicely done. You've got the cam movement, uh, Cam parts there, is it cam? Uh, I could be wrong on that, don't quote me. <laughs> uh, highlighted in red, which I think ties up beautifully. And as I say, limited to 600 pieces, a very, very cool watch, that is for sure. Um, so the reference to this one is SBK221G.FC6479. And as I said, automatic Tag Heuer Caliber Hoya 02, an in-house movement that they're very proud of. And this one's from July 2022, and it's in 39 mil. This is the new Carrera size uh, that they're doing part of the sort of heritage design, which I think works perfectly, and they're really playing around with this. And I think, you know, as I said, I'm excited for it. I think the, the future for Tag Heuer is very bright. The Acura Racer line they released recently, I think is one of the best they've done in a very long time. 
I'm a big fan of tag. I think you should be too. I think you should totally give them the time of day if you haven't already. It's paired on a black tag Hoya leather strap with a deployant Hoya sign buckle. Um, to some people, this will be upside down. I actually just think it wears better and more comfortably on my wrist. So I put it this way. However, if you want it the other way, just let us know. We can swap it prior to shipping. It's not a problem at all. Inside the box is also a non-tag Hoya, just generic beads of rice bracelet. That fits it quite well. And again, complements the look. Now, I will warn you, the box of this one is humongous and it comes with lots of different bits and bobs. So I did my best to fit it all in the photograph, so hopefully you can see. But as I say, July 2022 with everything and its manufacturer warranty. But let's show this one on wrist and tall dimension. Here we go, on my seven inch wrist, the 39 mil is absolutely perfect. So 39 mil by 47 mil lug to lug, 14 mil thick and 19 mil on the lug. So a little awkward on the lug length, but there are great options out there. I've seen a lot of people putting this on a brown which I think looks really good. However, I actually really like this black and red contrast. I think it's very striking. So go check this one out on the website today. From there, we'll stick across the top row and go over to what I think is probably one of the best value propositions of part of the Genta design range. This is the Bulgari Octo 38 uh, automatic in blue. A very interesting reference and under £3,000 with its box and papers. I think this is great value for money. So let's take a closer look at this one. And here we go. As I said in the intro, arguably one of the best value propositions in this drop in my opinion this is the bulgari octo in blue with the automatic and it's the beefier case so it's not the finissimo and i have to say you know the finissimo is truly fantastic but having these angles and and sort of shapes more pronounced because of the thickness uh, i think is really really cool and granted it's still not thick you know it's not a thick watch at all we'll get onto that when it's on wrist um, but i think it just really works really complements the overall design uh, screw down crown over there at three o'clock with a nice black cabochon on, uh, set in there. The reference is BGO38S and inside is the automatic Bulgari BVL191 uh, as you can see proudly displayed right there and decorated uh, very nice attractive watch. It comes paired on its original strap with a couple of stickers still uh, present on the deployant which looks really, really good. Condition-wise it's fantastic. There is a scratch on that look there as you can see but other than that for the most part it's pretty damn good, and I think you're going to be very, very impressed with this watch. Uh, Design-wise, you know, the Octo is sort of, uh, it's become a cult classic, and whether that's right or wrong, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it is truly just a great-looking watch, and I'm a really, really big fan. This one's from October 2016 with its box and paperwork, but let's show it on wrist and taut dimension. And here we go. On my 7-inch wrist, I would probably move it up one or two for my wrist, personally, just to get a more snug fit. Uh, but there you go. It is 38 mil by 44 mil lug to lug, only 10 mil thick, and that's what I was saying. It is not a thick watch. It sits so low on the wrist, it's incredible, but it is still quite a bit thicker than the Finissimo, which just gives more character, in my opinion, to the angles that the Octo is trying to display. Uh, and 27 mil at the lugs, obviously that's that part to that part, with a strap that you will require from Bulgari or a custom made strap, but either way, options out there from Bulgari. So go check this one out on the website today. Now over to a classic with the Amiga Speedmaster Reduced, uh, or the Automatic, depending on what you want to call it. And this is the Schumacher Yellow with its box and paperwork. The card's very hard to decipher, so we can't say 1 billion percent it is the card for this watch, but it's period correct and it looks correct. So again, it's there, the photos are there, you make that decision yourself. Um, but it has a correct box, which is this really cool tire that opens up. Check out the photos on the website. Um, and this is the Schumacher Yellow. So let's take a closer look at this one. Speedmaster Schumacher time with this very awesome racing yellow with the pops of red. It just looks absolutely fantastic with the racing dial and the track around the outside. Uh, this one also went back to Amiga for the full work. So it has the paperwork included for that. They did replace the hands. The original hands are still in there. And these are still original hands just with slightly brighter loom than the dial. Um, but as I say, the original hands are in there and we can probably get them swapped back for you if you so desire. Uh, good thing about Amiga is whatever they replace, they include back with it. You have a full size bracelet and the overall condition is truly fantastic. There is a mark on the bezels you can see there. It has been photographed. Uh, other than that, it's really, really fantastic. Polished very lightly in the past to bring it to this good looking sort of um, condition. 3510.12.00 is the reference and inside the automatic Amiga Caliber 
3220, which is the stacked movement. As you can see, the crown and the pushers are offset. You have basically an automatic watch with a chronograph module on top of it. Um, oftentimes, it is best for them to go back to Amiga, uh, just because for a lot of watchmakers, they don't particularly like working on these movements because it's like working on two movements because you have to separate the module and then you've got to service both technically. Uh, whereas Amiga can't charge you more for that because they made it this way. So they have to just honor their chronograph service price, which is good. So I would recommend that. This one's from circa 1998 with this box and paperwork. As I said, the paperwork, as I said in the intro, the paperwork is a bit hard to decipher exactly uh, like the, the original card. Um, so it's impossible for us to say with absolute certainty it is the card for this watch, but it's period correct and it looks correct. So I, I feel safe in saying box and paper still. But the, at the end of the day, you take a look and you decide for yourself. Um, let's show this one on wrist and tall dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, as you can see, very nicely proportioned at 39 mil by 44.5 mil lug to lug, only 12 mil thick and 18 mil on the lug. So endless options for swapping this out if you'd rather something other than the bracelet, but go check this one out on the website today. From there over to the 2023 Fears Christopher Ward Alliance uh, 01 Jump Hour with the beautiful burgundy deep red dial. I'm a huge fan of this watch, as a lot of you know, big fan of Fears and a good friend of Nicholas, and obviously a big fan of Christopher Ward as well, having owned and sold very, very many. Um, this is a great collaboration and one I think is truly fantastic, and I believe the first or second to market um, that has come up. So yeah, great opportunity to pick one up if you missed the opportunity when it came out. So let's take a closer look at that one. Next up, the Fizz and Christopher Ward Alliance 01 in burgundy or a dark red. It just looks absolutely beautiful. You can see the multiple finishes and textures there on the dial. Um, so as I said in the intro, as, uh, as you just heard then as well, Fizz and Christopher Ward two English brands coming together to combine their expertise, their design and their manufacturing to produce an incredible watch. Um, as you can see, Fears proudly stated and England. As we flip it over, you can see the quality control sticker, Christopher Ward logo proudly etched into one of the lugs as well as the Fears pipette in the other. Uh, and then you can see O1 uh, for the Alliance as well and part of the Alliance logo proudly stated there as well. Um, Really fantastic. This watch has been probably worn once, um, so it really is like new. It comes on its original strap, its original box and paperwork, and it's from January 2023. Now, how this watch works, as I pull out the crown, you will see you have your minutes, and as it gets to the hours, the hour jumps, there you go. So two, 10 past two, quarter past two, 20 past, 25 past, half past, and so on. And as we go round, you can see it keeps going. Now it is best to go round clockwise, do not go anti-clockwise. Uh, it's just not particularly good for the movement. And talking about movement, it is a heavily modified Salita SW200 modified by Christopher Ward uh, and made by Christopher Ward in terms of the watch for Fears. This great collaborative piece very very good looking piece so january 2023 full box and paperwork and as i say i believe it might be the second to market uh, of this edition so yeah one definitely to consider if you've been after one because who knows when the next one will come up so let's show on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist now if you have ever tried on a brunswick uh, the classic 38 mil this is quite a bit bigger and i don't just mean bigger in terms of case size but also thickness and just the overall wrist presence which i know for a lot of people is a huge plus because some people find the brunswick a bit too small um, i find it perfect but for others a bit, a bit too small this is definitely on the larger size for the design, I think it works really, really well with the overall look. So what you're looking at is 40.5 mil by 47 mil lug to lug, 13 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. So endless options, Fears even do a bracelet, which I believe will fit this watch as well. So go check this one out on the website today. Next, the 1969 Amiga Constellation, but not just any Constellation. This is the really, really cool straight lugged case, uh, super thin model with its box and paperwork. And it's not just box and papers with the original warranty card, which it has. It also has its original envelope with the serial number and the matching serial numbered paperwork inside of that as well. And that's stamped uh, rather than written. Really, really fantastic. A very rare full set. And it had the full works done with Amiga as well. So it's had a full service and everything like that as well. So let's take a close look at this one. Next up, the Amiga Constellation. This is an absolutely fantastic reference. 
and a really, really great size for me personally at the smaller case size. What you see on the dial is a really nice silver dial. It does have some marks here and there, but that's to be expected of a watch of this age. You have uh, slightly gold indices with black onyx throughout. Same with the hands. It's just beautifully done, all original and very, very nice. The reference is 167.021. As we flip it over, you're going to see the Constellation uh, logo etched beautifully on the case back, the observatory right there. Automatic Amiga Caliber 712 inside, and this one's from September 1969 with its original box and paperwork and extras as well in terms of the uh, even the little paper um, envelope with the serial etched onto it as well, or printed onto it. Absolutely fantastic. It's not stuff you see every day. And this one actually went back to Amiga for the full works as well, so it's had a full service with Amiga themselves, um, so it doesn't get much better than that. Really, really great. Not a huge amount more to say on this other than if you're after a vintage Amiga and you're after something with box and paperwork and something just kind of unique in terms of something you don't see every day, this is one to consider. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go paired on my seven inch wrist, as you can see on the smaller side, but really classic and elegant in my opinion, 33 mil by 39 mil look to look, only eight mil thick, incredibly thin and 19 mil on the lugs. Yes, a little awkward, but as always, there are options out there. So go check out this one on the website today. Now over to an 18 karat yellow gold JLC Reverso in the medium size, an absolute classic and manually wound. Um, you really can't go wrong with a watch like this if you're after a classic rectangular solid gold watch. Of course there's Cartier and there's some fantastic options there, but the Reverso offers something a little bit different dare I say maybe more of a watchmaker's choice uh, or a watch aficionado's choice I should I should say um, because at the end of the day Cartier is well known, JLC is also well known but I wouldn't say it's well, as well known so this sort of stands out in the crowd in my opinion so let's take a closer look at this one. 18 karat gold JLC reverso time as you can see absolutely beautiful classic with the silver forward slash white textured dial ever so slight graining on there very difficult to capture but the reference to this one is 250.1.86 and this one's from circa 1998 with its box and paperwork even has its original strap and original JLC buckle which is aged very very nicely um, obviously you can fit it on a new strap if you so wish 17 mil or you can go to JLC or any other manufacturer for that and uh, try and get it to fit uh, or taper down to the right one so you can use the 18 karat gold buckle provided. Nice small crown over there, JLC stated, and nice case back as well, which has got all the JLC reference and all that sort of stuff on there. Um, has It is fading ever so slightly, but it's still visible. Obviously, the great thing about the Reverso is the reversing feature. As you can see, you can flip it over to reveal the plain case back, really beautiful and absolutely incredible. Inside is a manually wound JLC Calibre 846, which is one of their own movements. A very, very beautifully finished movement, although you never get to see it. And that's why people call JLC the watchmaker's watch because all of the sort of craftsmanship is usually hidden away and out of view other than for a watchmaker. So as I say, circa 1998, this might be a birth year for some of you watching, or it might just be a great option for any of you out there. Now, as always, as we say we leave the watches unpolished so therefore we can always have it polished for you if you so desire yes it's got some wear but to be honest I don't think it's anything too bad personally I think it's perfectly acceptable um, but yeah you get to choose so if you want it polished let us know we can get a quote for you and it will add a bit of time to the delivery but at the end of the day you will get it back looking like new again. So let's show on wrist and taut dimensions. And here we go, paired on my seven inch wrist, a real classic size and proportion, in my opinion. 23 mil by 38.5 mil lug to lug, 6.5 mil thick and 17 mil on the lugs. So a really great looking watch and one well worth checking out and well worth every penny as well. So go check it out on the website today. Next to a really interesting watch, I believe I had it on wrist in the last episode of watch. I, again, pink gold. I'm, I'm definitely into the pink gold at the moment. This is an 18 karat gold Fluron, a brand that unfortunately went out of business during the quartz crisis or thereabouts. And it has a really interesting case, a very, very cool design and a very nice dial as well. All under a thousand pounds. I think there's a huge amount of value here. So let's take a closer look at this one. Next up, this gorgeous 18 karat rose or pink gold Fluron with this beautiful sort of explosive textured dial, as you can see, which matches 
beautifully with the 18 karat gold case, which features these very elegant lugs, bomb lugs, or there's lots of different names for them, spider lugs, you can call them whatever you want. Um, often I just call them fancy lugs, <laughs> and they certainly have that fancy charm to them. Nice original crown over there as well, and as we flip it over, snap on case back, and obviously this watch does have some wear, it's to be expected. What you're looking at is from the 1950s. I mean, we're talking 70 years old or thereabouts. Um, and the fact it's still running, still working, and still usable is fascinating to me, and that's the sort of beauty of vintage watches. Um, not to be surprised, not to be too surprised though, with a manually wound AS caliber 1187, very reliable manually wound movement um, that you'd expect would keep going for a very long time. Um, and this one is absolutely wonderful, as always. Comes with our uh, warranty as well, 12 months, obviously non-waterproof for this period. Please do not put this watch anywhere near water. And no surprise, I've paired it on a brown suede, um, although straps are the last thing to worry about. You can put whatever strap you want on a watch, especially when it's 18 mil like this one, the options are truly endless. So let's show this one on wrist and taut dimensions. Here we go on my seven inch wrist. I really couldn't help myself picking this one up. At under a thousand pounds, the value on this is insane. And again, 18 karat pink gold. You just don't see it often. Um, really don't, so well worth it. But anyway, 35 mil by 43 mil lug to lug, 8.5 mil thick and 18 mil on the lugs. A real beauty and well worth every penny. So go check it out on the website today. Now on to a Nevada. This is a modern reinterpretation or re-edition of the vintage. This is the Nevada Grinch in Chronomaster with the broad arrow and manually wound. Uh, manually wound, personally my favorite of the configurations. I think this is the most classic on the beads of rice. A very, very cool watch. And again, priced very well as well. So let's take a close look at this one. Next up, the Nevada Grenchin, really, really cool chronograph, aviator, sea diver, it's got a million names, with the broad arrow hands, and this is the manually wound version with the manually wound Salita SW510M BHB inside. Um, they've really nailed the proportions, the design, everything about this watch, and it really does look like the vintage model, in my opinion. Paired on a beads of rice bracelet, I think it suits it perfectly. However, this watch looks just as good on a leather strap, in my opinion. This one's from September 2021, and it does come with its box and paperwork. Really, really nice bezel, which um, rotates friction-wise, so you can go either way, as did the original. And you have the 45 minute, um, sorry, 30 minute totalizer over there with the first five minutes in bright red, which is just such a cool little thing. Uh, Nevada sign crown and Nevada sign case bank with the movement inside. As I say, Nevada, in my opinion, Nevada Grenchin, arguably some of the still, still some of the best value vintage watches out there and often overlooked, um, along with a couple of other brands like Mido, Movado, and, and those kind of ones, I think, and Gerald Perigo as well. I think they're, they're often overlooked, so it's great to see Nevada back and reissuing their vintage watches and doing it so, so well. And it gives that vintage charm without the, the worry of vintage, which a lot of people have, you know, um, about it being more fragile or how do you know it's original or all these things right so you get all of that um, worry reduced with this modern reinterpretation and all the modern build qualities you come to expect as well so let's show on wrist and taut dimensions here we go paired on my seven inch wrist a very very well proportioned watch at 38 mil by 46 mil look to look only 14 mil thick and do keep in mind some of that thickness is in that heavily domed sapphire crystal and 20 mil are the lugs with drilled lug holes so you can swap out the strap super easy for a nice brown suede <laughs> no surprise there with my choice but go check it out on the website today and now on to a beautiful Gerard Perigo, another vintage watch. This is a gyromatic high frequency from the 1960s um, with a beautiful champagne yellow dial with gold hands and indices to match as well. Really wonderful example and I think will definitely make someone very, very happy. Again, under that thousand pound price mark, I just think there's a huge amount of value here personally. So let's take a close look at this Next one. Next up, Gerald Perigo time with this absolutely beautiful gyromatic high frequency with the 36,000 um, beats per hour movement, which is an automatic Gerald Perigo caliber 444-429. Nice simple movement number there. Uh, you can see it features this really beautiful uh, grained champagne dial, I guess you'd call it, with gold 
tone hands and gold tone indices, which just looks so, so good. And typically these sort of things are found on gold colored watches, whereas this is on stainless steel and I think it looks really, really classy. Uh, you have a day day over there in, uh, I believe French, um, to change the um, time. You pull out the crown one position uh, and obviously you go around and you can change the day and date as you can see. Uh, and then if you pull the crown out all the way, uh, it does nothing as you can see and you push in the crown to change the date so it's a push date like so very very handy little thing so you have to go around manually to change the day and the push to change the date so hopefully that will make sense and that is why uh, i've already had some comments on it on one of the photos why does the crown poke out that much well it needs that space for the push in uh, change so that's why so it is correct, don't worry. It's not like someone's put the wrong stem on it. Uh, condition of this one is fantastic. It's been polished and it's been polished very, very well. We paired it on this ostrich style strap, which I think matches the doll beautifully. And the reference to this one is 4013R8. And this one's from circa 1960s. Uh, just fantastic example for this age. So let's show on wrist and torque dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, really great wrist presence with this one because of the slightly sort of tourneau cushion shaped case as opposed to to a traditional round makes it wear a bit bigger. So 35 mil by 41 mil lug to lug, only 10 mil thick and 20 mil on the lugs. Again, that sort of slightly larger lug size just makes the watch appear that much bigger, even though it isn't. So go check it out on the website today. So there you have it guys and girls, 11 watches, there was 12, there was a Ming uh, 1709 uh, in blue, it came with its Ming tray, that sold just a couple of days ago, uh, had been photographed ready to go and was gonna be in the drop. So thank you very much to the gentleman, you know who you are who bought that uh, to Go along with the burgundy you also got from us and a couple of other watches as well i know you're going to be enjoying it so uh, thank you very much for that purchase but that's why there's 11 instead of 12 and in the description you'll see 12 um, and on the website would would have been 12 but obviously it moved straight over to sold um, so yeah there you have it guys and girls and again next week's drop is already ready as in we've already got all the watches in there that's going to be in there some really great varied stuff from Chrono Tokyo, Grand Seiko, Rolex, a really beautiful vintage Rolex Air King actually with its box and paperwork uh, from 1965 with an Explorer dial. Very, very special, very rare and very, very good example. Lots of Christopher Wards uh, and some Zodiacs and a Nodus as well. So again, variety, uh, it's what we do. So thank you all very, very much. Really appreciate all the support and we'll see you all again next week. Take care.